Hello everyone. In this video we're going to be solving a factorial equation. We have n factorial equals n cubed minus n and we're looking for integer solutions. I'll be presenting two methods. Let's start with the first one. First methods, okay. Two methods, but first method is a method, right? Okay. So my first method basically involves, and it's gonna be the same thing for second method, so we're going to turn this into a nicer equation. Let's go ahead and expand n factorial and write it as n times n minus one times n minus two factorial. And on the right hand side, we have n times the quantity n squared minus one. Now, the reason why I expanded all the way down to n minus two factorial is I'm going to be able to factor n squared minus one using difference of two squares, and then I'll simplify it. Okay, great. So let's go ahead and expand the right-hand side by using difference of two squares. We can write this as n times n minus one times n plus one. So here, n times n minus one cancels out. We can go ahead and cancel these out. And we end up with a nicer, much nicer equation. n minus two factorial equals n plus one. Now, at any point, if you have a factorial equation, you can just plug in some numbers. At this point, it's probably a little easier uh, because you know that the factorials uh, you, know, you know, is going to grow faster than a polynomial. But uh, we want to find some upper bound for this. So for that purpose, uh, we're going to check a couple things here. So if n is greater than 5, consider the n minus 2 factorial. It is going to have, obviously, uh, n minus 2 as a factor, right? n minus 2 factorial has n minus 2 three and two as factors, right? So now why am I writing this down? Because I wanna compare n minus two factorial to n plus one. And for certain values when n gets larger, uh, obviously for example, if n is like eight, fa eight, let's say n equals eight, eight minus two is six, six factorial is definitely gonna be greater. But I wanna find an upper bound uh, for this one. So. Here's what we're gonna do. Since n is greater than five, I can just write it as two n minus n is greater than five. And then I'd like to turn this into something that I can kind of manipulate. So I'm gonna write it as two uh, n is uh, greater than n plus five, and then two n minus four is greater than n plus one. Here we go. So by subtracting, so okay, by putting the n on the other side and then subtracting four from both sides, I was able to get n plus one on the right hand side. And now I can factor out the two and write this as two times n minus two is greater than n plus one. Great, so now, since we do know that two times n minus two is greater than n plus one, and we also know that n minus two factorial has definitely n minus two, two and three as factors, so that means it's gonna be greater than this one. So we can write the following inequalities. n minus two factorial, is greater than two times n minus two because obviously the one on the left hand side has more factors and they're all positive. And this is gonna be greater than n plus one. Great, so now remember our equation was n minus two factorial equals n plus one, but we notice that if n is greater than five, then our the left hand side of the equation is gonna be greater than the right hand side. Therefore, they can never be equal. So from here, we get the conclusion or result n minus two factorial is greater than n plus one if n is greater than five. That means that there are no solutions for n values that are greater than five. So we're gonna be looking for values that are less than or equal to five. So let's go ahead and test them out. So this is our equation that we're testing, n minus two factorial equals n plus one. Suppose n equals two. Okay, if n is equal to two, then you're gonna get zero factorial equals two plus one. Obviously that is false, right? Three does not equal one. Okay, n equals three is gonna give you one factorial equals three plus one. One factorial is one and three plus one is four. Again, that is not going to work. How about n equals four? 
2 factorial equals 4 plus 1. Obviously, 5 is not a factorial. We know that 2 factorial is 2. This is false as well. So now the last value, hopefully we're going to get something from here, n equals 5, is going to give us 5 minus 2 factorial, which is 3 factorial, equals 5 plus 1, and 5 plus 1 is 6, as you know, and 3 factorial is also 6. See, when you simplify it, it's a little easier to check. So this checks, which means n equals 5 is a solution. But guess what? That is the only solution, because we noticed that n is greater than 5 is not going to give us any solutions. Cool. Let's go ahead and take a look at the second method. Okay. Second method is definitely shorter. Obviously, the first method is always more painful, right? So I'm going to pick up where we simplified, you know, our expression. We don't have to go through that again, right? Now, at this point, notice that n equals 2, it's kind of easy to see, right? Is not a solution, right? Okay, great. So that means we can divide both sides by n minus 2. Now, we divided sort of, you know, to simplify this, we divided the original equation by n times n minus 1, but we can, simp uh, we can divide more. Uh, okay, let's see. Uh, since n equals 2 is not a solution, that means our solution is going to be greater than n equals 2, remember? So let's go ahead and divide this by both sides, I should say, by n minus 2. Great. And now when you expand this, this is going to become n minus 2 times n minus 3 factorial. Of course, this is true for n values that are greater than 2, right? It's going to give us the following. Now, n minus 2 cancels out, and we end up with another factorial. And obviously, for n values that are greater than or equal to 3, this is an integer. So n minus 3 factorial is an integer. Therefore, the right-hand side also needs to be an integer. How do you write this as an integer? Well, I can kind of manipulate the numerator, and this is a common technique that we use, you know, just change the numerator. So I'm writing the n plus 1 as n minus 2 plus 3, so to make it look like the denominator. And then from here, I can kind of break it down and write this as n minus 3 quantity factorial, or n minus 3 factor, whatever, is equal to now. I'm going to split it up into two pieces. So n minus 2 divided by n minus 2 is just going to be 1, right? And the rest is going to be 3 divided by n minus 2. Notice that we said this is an integer, right? Z is the set of integers. So how can this be an integer? Well, n minus 2 must be a factor of 3 or a divisor of 3, right? So in other words, n minus 2 divide, we could also use the symbol, 3. But um, in order for n minus 2 to divide 3, n must be either 3 or 5. But if n is equal to 3, you're going to get from here, you're going to get 1 plus 1, which is 2. And on the left-hand side, you're going to get 1 factorial, right? Or 0 factorial, rather. So n equals 3 is not going to work. And we are left with the only solution, n equals 5. And it actually does work. And this brings us to the end of this video. Well, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe. Take care and bye-bye.